Well, I found the problem with the chain popping and sprocketing and jumping and a little bit due to the machine flexing and this, that, and other, but why was it flexing? What was making it flex and all this? Well, I don't know how well you can tell, but after looking at it for long enough, there are spots where, say like this rise, where that curl gets looped out further. See, that one looks real far. Some of them slope out further than the other ones. And so when the chain pulls to the left, pulls the sprocket counterclockwise, it rides up on top of these gear teeth instead of staying down in the valley, which causes the next rung in the chain to be a little bit further back here and causes it to hit right there on the tip of that tooth because it's already rose up there. So I thought about sawing the teeth down, but then I figured it'd just make things even junkier. I thought about turning it around backwards and running this side of the tooth, but instead I just ended up getting a different sprocket. And the sprocket we're gonna end up putting on is a little bit bigger than this one, which will cause the wheel to turn faster which will cause the generator to turn slower, but it still should end up turning the generator the same speed just because we still will have plenty of speed available. So I think that's where our problem was. It, I think it all lied into how this is pushed forward, how that curve is nice and sharp on that backside and how it's sloped out so far. Let's see if I can stand it. Maybe that'll show it to you a little bit easier. And so that caused the chain to rise up to the top, which caused it on the bottom to hit on the next spoke in the chain, which try not to get just super greasy. Next spoke in the chain or next yeah, grease rung in the chain being one of those. I got a clean my ink pen. I use this ink pen like every day, all day. So I was going to put this sprocket. We ended up finding one that's the same size. But this center diameter happened to be larger. You can see here how that slope isn't quite as great. But you can still see a fair amount of it how this side's shorter, or this side's steeper, and this side sloped more out. But it's nowhere near as bad as what we were dealing with. The next, the sprocket I already have on back of the truck, ready to go down there, looks pretty good. Which reminds you, this is all minimum 50 year old equipment. All my bearings are already starting to wear out. You can see how bad this one was. See, it was only riding on the chain here and leaving a deposit there, which you can tell the tops of all these teeth have gone. So you can see real bad over there how that sharp curl comes up with original material. And then it was supposed to come back out, but it has worked all that material down like that. And I think that's what's causing our chain pop. Plus, not having the sprocket secure enough from being able to walk forward under high level of tension of stress. So here we are back at the water wheel. I've been working on stuff. I don't have the water on full power because it shoots past my wheel, which I think if we put a whole nother row of buckets in, we can turn the water up all the way and make more power. But it's doing pretty good right now. 
It's uh, running pretty quiet. I've had to cut keyways in and put locks and all sorts of stuff in those buckets. Those flat boards are there for erosion control. It's dumping right in my water, so not causing any erosion down there. This water that's falling back is so small, not much. Yeah, I got my helper helping me. He's about to turn two. Got a birthday party this weekend. And wanted to make sure we had lights for the birthday party, which at the house at this current moment, we do not have electricity because the state provider of electricity is awful. It's not consistent. So to fix my, I don't know if you can see, I couldn't move the light, but to, I had to put something to make that chain ride better. And it's probably too dark to show you how many volts we're making. Let's see. It's 120, and then if I swap it over to 240, you can hear it picks up a lot. Swap it back down to 120. Turn them lights on. And I'd like to try to use some LED lights, some more efficient lights. You ready to ride in the truck, bud? Huh? Ha! Nah. Water wheel. Boss, Boss man's on my shoulders. So he kind of kicks the yeah, yeah. camera around a little. Ow, that's my neck. Water wheel, bud. That's so cool. I think it's just uber cool. Woo! Just watching the old water wheel. A real water wheel. Oh, water wheel climb back up to my heel. Truck. Cheese. Cheese. We're taking a picture of the water wheel. You don't have to say cheese. Water wheel needs to say cheese. I don't have the pipe straight. I just don't have anything perfect yet, Jake but it is what it is. And then to go up there to the valve. Cheese water wheel. You see the water wheel on the camera? This is going to go on YouTube. Cheese, you want to say hey to everybody on YouTube? You'll be able to watch this at the house later. Yeah. All right, y'all. I think this might be the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Comment. Tell me what I could do. Pretty cool. Say hey to Boss Man. And water wheel. And thank y'all very much for checking it out. Bye.